Hello everyone, welcome to the last two lectures of today. Our next speaker is Arijit Ganguly from IIT Kanpur and he will speak on random walks on tori and normal numbers on self-similar sets. Okay, so I thank the organizers first for giving me this opportunity. So in this talk, I am going to show you a connection between the two main topics appear in the title. Uh, it's a joint work with uh, Barak Weiss and Iftak Dayan. So let's start uh, with the random walks on Torai. So let G be a topological semi-group. Assume locally compact second countable and uh, having a continuous action on uh, n-dimensional torus and fix a Borel probability measure on on G. So a random walk of uh, the random walk on that uh, n-dimensional torus can be described informally as follows. So for any given x in the torus, what we do is we sample a group element uh, G with the law mu and then moving x to uh, Gx and proceeding, yeah, and continuing this process indefinitely, one gets a random path in the So continuing this is a, this indefinitely one gets a random path inside the n-dimensional torus. More formally, so what we do is uh, we rather consider the n-fold Cartesian pro, the Cartesian product of infinitely many copies of G and define beta to be the where mu is the measure considered above. And so what we want to study is precisely this for any x. Uh, uh, for almost every sequence. This is precisely wh wh what we want to study. Okay, so let's uh, define uh, for a measure We define the convolution of nu and mu to be uh, the measure which is defined in this way. Which is precisely nothing but uh, I have a continuous map from G cross Tn to Tn. So equip this site uh, with the product measured uh, mu cross nu and then pushing this measure using the action map. Yeah. We say uh, nu is mu stationary if Okay, clearly all mu invariants, in particular uh, G invariant measures are mu stationary, but uh, the converse doesn't hold. In fact, there have been some new results. Uh, for instance, the work of, uh, yeah, the work of Burgain, Furman, Lindgren, Strauss, and uh, Moses, followed by a series of papers by Beno and Kant where they have dealt with, in the, with the situation when G acts on the torus by automorphisms. And uh, the, these results show that under certain conditions, all the stationary measures are nothing but convex combinations of uh, hard measure and the atomic measures. Yeah, so in this talk, we will be uh, dealing with the maps of this form. So they, they are the transformations, affine transformations of the torus uh, of the form x goes to dx plus uh, y, where d is a integer valued n cross n matrix uh, with all eigenvalues greater than one in uh, modulus and y is a 
vector in Tn. So, in fact, what we will have is for any, I will have I will have k such affine transformations and uh, define g to be the semigroup generated by uh, hi. Put a probability measure, probability measure on this finite set. And now you can view that probability measure as a probability measure on G supported on this, uh, uh, on this uh, say a finite set of index. Okay. So our result regarding the stationary measures under the, the random walk on the torus by this semigroup is the following. Yeah. No, no, D is fixed, sorry. So D is fixed. Uh, sorry, sorry. So D is fixed. So for each I have, I have a vector yi. Thus I have, so uh, thus I have a family of maps with this uh, fixed uh, expanding constant and then considering this subgroup. So everything is in modulo one. Mod zn in fact. So here all the plus signs that are, that are appearing are all in modulo Z1, Zn. So so, so in the setup described above, that is I have a, uh, I have such a collection of maps. So assume, Assume the set of all differences in the translations, 1i, assume that this set is not contained in any proper closed of the torus. Assume that this condition happens, then uh, then the Haar measure is the unique stationary measure So under the, yeah, under the random walk. Okay, so as a remark, I want to mention that when n is 1, the, that is in dimension 1, we have somehow, we have obtained, uh, I mean, somewhat even more stronger result. And in one dimension, we somehow have a, in some sense, some complete classification. If time permits, I will uh, discuss that. But before that, uh, I want to tell you what is the uh, advantage of having the unique stationary measure. So, any question? Okay, sorry. Sorry. So, we shall appeal to something called Bremen's law of large numbers. Uh, I am not uh, getting into what it is. However, I am, we are more interested in the corollary uh, that we obtain uh, from this and using this Bremen's uh, law of large numbers. So it says, so, uh, for, in view of this theorem and applying Bremen's law of large numbers, what we get as a corollary is the following. For every starting point x in the torus, for almost every, almost every is in the sense of uh, 
uh, the beta, which is nothing but the Cartesian product of the measured mu on the, the product space. So let's rather write for beta, for beta almost every sequence. The following happens. So in other words, for any, any starting point x, x, almost every random trajectory equidistributes Uh, with respect to the hard measure. That's what our uh, result regarding the random walk on Tori is. The, uh, so uh, that, uh, any question? Okay. So the, so the assumption is all eigenvalues are having modulus greater than one. So there will be a uh, problem. Let's discuss that later. Uh, let me finish it. So, okay. So this is the random walk part of uh, this talk. Now let's, uh, sorry? Weak start topology, weak start topology. So in other words, for every continuous function, <laughs> This converges to its integral. If, uh, yeah, torus is compact already. Okay, so let's now come to the uh, self-similar sets. So by a similarity iterated function system, uh, IFS, we shall mean a finite collection of uh, maps. Let's denote by phi one x as a R I into some, let's say alpha I, where each R I is uh, lies between zero to one, O I is orthogonal, and uh, alpha I, <laughs> let's take a vector in uh, uh, torus. So by a simulate IFS, I mean a finite collection of maps of this form. So for any such uh, simulate IFS, there exist a unique compact set, namely its attractor, which satisfies this property. Uh, so let's uh, let i belongs to this finite index set. So attractor has this property and uh, that enables one to consider this uh, coding map. Any question? So we can consider this coding map. Ah, okay, okay, okay. No, okay. For the time, at least here, uh, here you, you you can consider everything with integer matri uh, integer coefficients. So let okay. For at least here, you consider everything in Rn. The, the definition it doesn't matter again. The definition it doesn't matter. But in our context, we will be considering the iterator function system on the torus only. So we have this coding map to the attractor K. So for any sequence maps to, uh, we'll rather, I1, I2, 
do nothing but uh, uh, limit uh, here x, you can take zero no problem. So this uh, gives a coding of the elements in K using this uh, sequences and uh, okay. There is a very natural uh, type of measure uh, supported on uh, K which are obtained by choosing a probability measure on this uh, Bernoulli space and then pushing that uh, forward by this uh, phi map. So we call such measures as phi Bernoulli measures. Okay, so uh, hence for, so hereafter, whenever we will consider some self-similar sets, we will always uh, assume that it is equipped with some Bernoulli measure. Any question? Okay. So now let's define uh, uh, the other notion, normal numbers. So, Fix a, uh, an integer in d greater than 2. We say that x is normal to the base d if for every L and word w of length word uh, in uh, the alphabet of length L uh, and for word W in uh, length L, W appears in the digital expansion of x to the base d with frequency, asymptotic frequency more precisely, 1 by d to the power l. Or equivalently one can show, equivalently uh, the sequence d to the power n x equidistributes equidistributes in the tor uh, in the one dimensional torus with respect to hard measure so maybe we can take x to, uh, we can remove the fractional part it's no problem so this is what the definition of normal number is. So if a number is uh, normal with respect to any base, then we will call it normal. So, okay. So from the ergodicity of this map, uh, from torus to torus, uh, modulo one, so since this map is ergodic, so as a consequence of this ergodicity it follows that almost every, almost every x in, uh, is normal to any base. Therefore, it is now legitimate to focus our attention on the uh, self-similar subsets of uh, the real line and ask questions about the size of the set of numbers which are normal to a given base or any base. So whenever we ask such questions that what is, what is the size of such set, there are two kinds of answers. So one kind of answer is regarding house drop dimension. So any question? Okay. So, it was proved by uh, Broderick, Fishman, Kleinbach, uh, Rees, and Weiss that uh, uh, 
the set of real numbers which are not normal to any base. Uh, the set is hyperplane, absolutely winning, and therefore uh, thus it has full house of dimension. But in this talk, we are not getting into that. Rather, we are interested in uh, me measured theoretic questions. So, the point of our interest is the following, that uh, in many cases, with respect to many uh, natural measures supported on the self-similar sets, it happens that almost every number belonging to that set becomes normal with respect to any given base. Of course, this is not the case everywhere, because, for example, if you take the usual Cantor's middle third set, then no number is normal with respect to base 3. Uh, yeah, so there are so many cases where this happens. Uh, several results are obtained for this type of questions uh, due to this people, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, uh, then uh, Castles, and then a recent one, Hotchman, Schmerkin. Hotchman, Schmerkin. So, so there is a, I mean, a very important characteristic in all these uh, uh, results that all of them assume that the contraction ratios, in the, that means these RIs, are uh, independent with the base under consideration. So, for, ex for instance, let me uh, write a very special case of the result by Hotchman and Schmerkin. So, I have an iterate simulate IFS like this. Ah. So, uh, it satisfies something called open set condition. I am not getting into that with some open set condition. Suppose my uh, simulate IFS has this condition and assume uh, assume that uh, uh, for, uh, okay, there is a D, okay, well, so D is going to be my base, so fix D, fix uh, D, so assume that uh, there exists some Ri which is not dependent on D, that is in the sense that uh, such that log of ri divided by log of d does not belong to q. In other words, so d is not allowed to be the rational power of uh, all the contraction ratios. In that case, then with respect to any Bernoulli measure, any, five, let's call it phi Bernoulli measure, almost every x in k is normal. Normal to base d. So as I said that uh, they assumed some independence condition on the contraction ratios and the base under consideration. So in our uh, ongoing project, we are dealing with a completely opposite situation. So what we will do is, so instead of uh, considering the bases are independent, the bases independent of the constant of the contraction ratios, we will rather work with this uh, uh, system where the base and contraction ratio are just uh, reciprocal to each other. So what we do is again fix a positive integer d, define f x to be uh, plus. plus some uh, ti. Now, uh, x, so everything is in now in modulo 1. Uh, well, we can consider in Rn as well. Ti is in the n-dimensional torus and d is an integer. So, for example, uh, if uh, suppose uh, the dimension is 1 and uh, my maps are, let's say, 
x by 3 and uh, x by 3 plus 2 by 3, then as the attractor, we get the usual middle third canter set. And suppose I, we change it a little bit and consider some 2 alpha by 3, then that gives rise to the canter set dilated by the uh, amount uh, alpha. So, yeah. So our result in this case is the following. So, in the case uh, when we have fix to be x by d plus some uh, ti, all, all the maps are uh, just some affine transformations of the torus. Assume that the translation parts. not contained uh, in any proper closed subgroup of Tn, then with respect to any for every Bernoulli measure, almost every point, almost every point in the attractor, uh, this sequence equidistributes in the torus with respect to the harnesser. Okay, so the, I want to make the following remarks. First of all, the, all the earlier results, there the condition was put on the contraction ratios, but in this case, we, the condition that we are putting is on the translation part. So the difference, okay. So for example, you can see this, that uh, while the previous theorem were unable to provide information about the normality of a typical point, let's say in the, uh, dilation of a, uh, of the case standard canter set with uh, by some irrational member irrational number alpha so all the previous results were unable to provide any information on that but in view of our theorem it follows that with respect to any bar lonely measure the uh, the almost every point becomes uh, normal to any base and coupling that with the earlier results of uh, uh, hotchman and schmirkin so what we get is uh, with respect to any uh, base, because hotchman schmirkin talks when the base is not the power, rational power of the contraction ratios, and we saw, and our result basically complements that their result. So coupling these two is we get that uh, uh, they are, uh, I mean, with respect to any base, almost every point EQ distributes uh, in the in uh, the torus with respect to hard measure. So since I am almost. Uh, uh, running out of time, so uh, I should uh, give, I should at least tell how this and what is the connection between the uh, this result and that result. So I will very briefly show just one or two lines. One minute, okay, I can do it. So as I said that uh, every member in the attractor has this coding. So in this case, Suppose, suppose X admits this form that uh, if I am, then one can directly uh, calculate and see this is nothing but this. Tij plus uh, pi of uh, Tn of the sequence. Pi is in that case the coding map. So 
So, uh, so DNX is precisely, uh, it has two parts. So this part and that part. What we can do is we can show that this part becomes the tra trajectory under some random walk. So if uh, we consider our H, our maps to be D of, uh, D of X plus TY. So if we consider this collection of maps, then we can see that this part becomes the random trajectory uh, under the random walk of the semi-group generated by this map on the uh, n-dimensional on the n-dimensional torus. Therefore, from uh, the earlier theorem regarding the unique stationary measure, the q-distribution of this part is assured. Then, uh, the re for the rest, uh, we uh, adopt some argument given in the works of Barak Weiss and uh, David Simmons. Then, that will assure that the sum will equidistribute as well. So that's how, uh, uh, yeah, that's how the proof goes. Okay, I think I will stop. Any questions or comments? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this uh, this sets the uh, li limit sets of this system. Sorry. So, so this in this example where you have x over d plus ti. This one. Yes. Ah. Uh, so these are just products of counter sets on the each. So this is just the, the dilation of the counter set by the amount. Okay, of. but in higher dimensions, it's just the product of a bunch in of n, n counter sets, right? Uh, okay. You can you can do it in each coordinate, and then you just have to have the product set, mm -hmm. right? Uh. So, so so it's enough to. Oh, no, it's I'm not a product. Not sure about uh, that. Okay, maybe I'm confused. But the notion of normality does not make any sense in the higher dimension. But uh, the, oh. equity, the notion of equity distribution, I mean, makes sense in every dimension. Wait, but uh, you, you didn't state it in uh, high dimension torus. Uh, no, no. The result in the result that we have proved that uh, the uh, the orbit equity distributes. So in di particular, I mean, specializing to dimension that gives the normality. Okay, but isn't it true that this equidistributes if and only if each, in each coordinate you have equidistribution? Uh, that's I that's so not maybe it's not true. Okay, anyway, but but uh, but this this d is uh, is a scalar. Uh, here. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. What is d? Okay, so okay, yeah, yeah. So in this theorem, so this theorem is all about the normal numbers in the fractals. Yeah. So it's in Tn or, or in T? So x is a vector in Rn. So that is divided by the in, uh, an integer greater than oh, or Oh, D is an integer. Okay. D is an integer. OK. So but, the way but, we uh, use that is following that. In, uh, so mm -hmm. an integer D gives rise to a diagonal. But matrix. if you take this uh, matrix, Sorry? If you take D to be a matrix as before, you don't here, have... Yeah, yeah, here D is matrix, so the connection is, and every integer D gives us to the diagonal matrix. D, but D, but D. Can, you have, can you take a matrix and get the same? No. Mm, okay, no, maybe but, you can uh, tell me later. That may not make sense, right? You get a set of five yeah. Why so? D inverse, okay. D, yeah, yeah, the natural. Yeah, sulfur fine, maybe hard. Uh, for the, yeah, yeah, for this kind of, uh, yeah, so invertible uh, integer valued matrices. Uh, okay. I don't know what uh, okay, okay. will happen. Yeah, so uh, for in one dimension, we have a somewhat more general result, that, but that I skipped. For higher dimension, yeah, so that what you were saying, uh, actually, we tried that to some extent, but somehow didn't succeed. So it's, it's still an ongoing project. Any further questions? <laughs> if not, let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you for your attention.